Hello and welcome. Well, our special guest today doesn't need much of an introduction. He is one of Australia's most popular actors and beloved faces on Australian screens. Now, he has long been a popular face on TV with starring roles in Home and Away, House Husbands and Underbelly, just to name a few. And he's even recently featured on the cover of Australian Men's Health magazine, if you don't mind. Now, for the past month, or for the past year, I'm sorry, of course, he's undergone a complete transformation of mind and body on an inspirational health and wellness journey. Now, he's also Australian Organic Awareness Month Ambassador, and we are thrilled to welcome Lincoln Lewis. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Really good. Really good. How are you doing? I'm just really excited to be chatting with you. Now, yeah, I understand likewise. since you've been um, on your health and wellness journey amongst many changes, you've lost is it over 10 kilograms since last year? How much in total have you yeah, lost? Yeah, well, uh, when I first started from, from day one of that men's health transformation, I was at about 90 kilos. And um, that's, the, that's sort of the heaviest I've ever been. But mentally, I was as, as bad as I've ever been. Um, emotionally, very much like my cup was empty. So, um, but yeah, physically, I started at about 90 kilos. And um, by the end of the transformation, so officially, I, um, I'd lost... 12 and I remember doing the weigh in about two days before we did a shoot and I'd lost uh, 12 kilos in the space of um, 12 weeks but then in in the like on the actual shoot day I weighed myself and I think it was sort of another sort of 2.5 kilos lighter than that so I think That's I finished crazy. at about yeah so it was, it was it was in the mid to low 70s oh no I think it might have been mid yeah no mid 70s or something like that yeah so anyway so a lot wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um yeah it, it was it was crazy but like more than that I, I I felt good. I was my, my mind was good. My like what I always sort of tell people when they talk about that kind of stuff is the physical transformation or any kind of anything physically that is, is out there. That's what people can see. But internally, that's what I felt. And that's what yeah. I knew where the biggest change was. Yeah. Well, look, congratulations <clears throat> on all you've achieved. It's really an inspirational story that really is sure to motivate and, and inspire anyone watching and listening this for sure. So you've got to be really happy with yourself. And, and secondly, yeah. of course, you're, you're looking great shape. So, and I bet you feel fantastic too, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was the thing that, um, that I've, I've changed the most is just it, like, lifestyle is is not just one thing it's not just sort of okay make this this one different thing i'm going to do every day it's it's a constant thing it's like going to the gym you need to continuously keep working on yourself and and your, your thoughts the way you the way you approach every single habit because for me the habits were the hardest thing to change and so once i put those things in place that was that was a cool thing so how i'm how i'm eating is a lot better i'm eating a lot more um, a, a lot healthier, a lot less processed shit. Mind you, I still do treat myself, but um, <laughs> you can have a balance. I, I'm, yeah, exactly right. We're all human. Yeah. <laughs> you got to live right, but, but still, exactly. it's more of the good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just just uh, getting outside a lot, and and which you know, obviously, we we're, we're just having a quick chat before we jumped on, and um, with with everything to do with COVID, I think it's one of those things where just how light side and get some fair and when you are able to interact with people, how lucky we are to do things like that. So the things that we, not to say we take for granted, but we're very used to in everyday life, such as being able to walk outside anytime we want to and just go for a walk or go to the beach or go for a run. A lot of that had, has had to be scaled back. And so when we do get that opportunity, it's like just take every second you can and make it all count. A hundred percent. And you've got a busy few weeks coming up too, don't you, with Australian Organic Awareness Month uh, in September yeah. as this year's yes. ambassador, which is exciting. So can you tell us a little bit about that? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was I was really very fortunate that um, Australian Organics approached uh, me and, and asked me to be their ambassador. So um, yeah, in, in the lead up, we've been doing a lot of filming and be going to a lot of organic producers and uh, that we're all we're going to be putting out through the span of September, which is Australian Organic Awareness Month. Now, the reason that we're doing this or that that Australian Organics have have created Organic Awareness Month is because Australia is the only developed country in the world that doesn't have a governing body about the use of the word organic yeah. so the basically to break that down if you were to go into a shop and you see a lot of packaging because a lot of people are really in this in this mindset and you can probably hear my dog in the background a little poodle barking around um <laughs> you, you probably see a lot of packages which says organic and that is fantastic because a lot of people want to look after themselves and and whatnot but we don't have a regulating body surrounding the use of the term organic so if you go to the shops and you see the Bud logo, which like the, a certification logo, that means it has met the standard required to use the term organic. But if it's anything other than that, 
it, you, you can't be certain of what percentage is actually organic. You could actually have a very low percentage of organic products and the rest is, is the, the very, you know, the normal kind of stuff, which mind you, isn't like putting toxic, toxic in your body, but in the instance of wanting to look after yourself, supporting the local producers and manufacturers, which have done the hard work to make sure that they are giving the organic product or meeting the standard of what is organic, that's what you want to really be looking for. So that's what we're going to be putting out is to look for the certified logo and also to just talk about the progress that I think, we're, we're fingers across, hopefully either by this year or next year, um, we will have a regulating body surrounding the use of the term organic. And, but yeah, whether it's, whether it's that food, cosmetics, because not only what we're putting in our, in our bodies, but also what we're putting on our bodies. It's um, yeah, when you want to look after yourself, it, you, know, you want to make sure you're doing it right. So that, yeah. is, that is the whole point around doing Australian Organic Awareness Month. Awesome. And I've I've got a heap of stuff I want to ask you about that later on in the chat. So, so, I mean, after going through that period of depression, you decided to turn your life around and overhaul, I guess, your nutrition and your fitness, which involved including, you know, as you just say, more wholesome organic produce. So can you maybe just tell us about this and what examples you can give to any parent watching, I guess, of the natural unprocessed um, health food that you started eating that really helped with that change? Is it sort of raw, yeah. raw foods? I mean, overall, I mean, yeah, where did you start? Well, yeah, uh, basically we just made sure to incorporate just a lot of, a lot of veg and a lot of protein and, and the less processed, the better. So like we cooked it well, we cooked it in um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of organic uh, produce um, and, and everything like that. But we just made sure to have as, as everything I was eating, as little processed stuff, the better. And, um, yes. So, and, and look, um, I mean, honestly, I, I, you know, going back to it, there's no scientific definitive proof, but again, for each person that can say testament to this kind of stuff, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. And how I was feeling was, was the thing that no one else could see, but I knew within myself and my mental clarity was through the roof. Um, I, I was, I was feeling clearer. I was thinking clearer. Um, I noticed the whites in my eyes were returning. Like I was, I was a lot of the time I was very bloodshot and, and stuff like that. So I could, the whites in my eyes were returning. Um, so, so I just felt more energetic. So, cause I was going to ask you, I mean, how would you best describe the benefits of organic produce? And it's exactly what you're just saying. <clears> it's just overall, just your energy levels um, lifted mental clarity, um, yep. holistically your mind, body, spirit, you sort of just lifted. Is that the best way to just yeah, every, it? every, uh, yeah, and totally every aspect. And so like, you know, I keep going back to it like that. Everything is connected. So like you just said, Hey, um, mentally I was feeling clearer and I was thinking clearer. Um, emotionally I was, I, I don't know. I just didn't feel, I didn't feel weirdly drained all the time and, and lethargic and stuff like that. I actually just, I, I, I started to feel a bit happier and I, and whether that's a, like, you know, a mixture of, my own energy levels, but also not putting shit in stuff in me that was making me feel really sluggish. sluggish. But then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then so, physically, so, you could I could just see that my my like I was looking a lot brighter, and my skin was clearing up. So I mean, what is? Well, I mean, what do you like about organic produce, and what's maybe like a typical day eating? I mean, how how does it sort of affect you? And like, yeah. what would you eat on an average day then, from an organic produce perspective? Average day. Um, so what I'll do, like just brekkie, um, I'll just make, like hook up some eggs um, with some avocado and I'll treat myself with sometimes a little bit of halloumi, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's just make some <laughs> eggs, some avocado, some mushrooms and some spinach. And, and for me, that's like, I don't know why I just froth that for a good brekkie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that like, if you notice, like we just had some this morning, if you notice the difference between your organic free range eggs, as opposed to, you know, you, you know, it's fine, whatever, but you notice the difference, you notice even just the color of the yolk and everything like that. It just, it just, you can see the difference, not only taste the difference, but then on top of that, so you can, I can talk about the taste and I can talk about um, the fact that with organic farming, we're not, they're not using pesticides, hormones, steroids, chemicals. Um, everything is, as one of these um, farmers that I, I uh, interviewed during the, um, a lot of the filming we've been doing in the past couple of weeks, he said he was a fourth or fifth generation farmer. He said, look, how my father, grandfather, his grandfather, all that kind of stuff, how they all lived, that was organic. There was no such word because everything was organic. There was no, there was no such thing. So he goes, what we're using is modern technology, but, eating the way that my grandparents or all of our grandparents used to eat, which is 
free of all the chemicals, free of all the, like, like they're free to roam. They're, the they're not getting grain yeah. fed, they're getting grass fed, all that kind of stuff. So whether in that instance, I'm talking about like, you know, meat and, and, and chickens and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Uh, but, I guess in uh, our sorry. day-to-day life these days, so a lot goes into a product to ensure that it's certified organic because we are Absolutely. using all of those pesticides and everything else and as you mentioned at the very start of the chat i understand here in australia we don't have any regulations around what the word organic really sort of means um and we don't really understand what real um organic product is and what isn't so for anyone watching and listening you know what really needs to to change for this to improve um is it a change to our domestic regulations because i think you mentioned that that at the start is that what it is yeah absolutely so you know i think i think the best way is every time you spend money you're casting a vote for the kind of world that you want to uh live in and so you know anytime if you want to buy organic the best way that we can say it is anytime and ever since i signed with australian organics and i noticed the bud logo and what that actually meant every time i'm buying something now i look and you will see the bud logo on the front which means it's aco certified so meaning it has met the standard required for what would be australian certified organic um and like so i think you know for anyone that's going to be purchasing or just on an informational level what we're, we're trying to get past that so like i was saying earlier hopefully this year hopefully next year we're going to cross that line and there will be a governing body to regulate the use of the term organic um so every time you're buying you know look for that bud logo um and and that's the best ways because not only are you supporting what the organic industry is trying to achieve but you're also supporting local farmers you're supporting local producers you're supporting local businesses which in a time where if you think back 10 15 years ago the organic section in any supermarket was like time, <laughs> right? And now you're seeing a whole row of it. Like a whole aisle is, is basically organic stuff, but then not even that in different sections all across, you'll see organic stuff. And there's organic shops that aren't out in the middle of nowhere that you have to go specifically look to find that. They are everywhere. And then you'll have farmer stores and stuff like that. But that had to start somewhere. And the hoops that these OGs have had to jump through just to make sure that they're meeting these uh, standards has not been easy because they're pioneering it and for them to really spend the money and do that the time and the effort that it takes to be able to produce organic food for us to eat is is not is not easy so when yeah. when you like you know you know that you can support that that's that's kind of like a really i don't know i think that that's the thing that also makes you feel quite good to know that literally switching from one thing to another it's no it's no it's not a hard thing for us to do just to sort of do that and i think without sounding too as you said so it's, it's, if that sounded- no not at all but i loved what you said at the start is the fact that we're casting our vote by what we decide to sort of to purchase and to consume and that, that that's very powerful uh, you know, for us to be able to take away. Yeah. And I, mean, I understand um, the government is currently considering a, a number of um, sort of re- regulatory pathways to align Australia with international standards. As you mentioned here, it's what our standards are here. Also yeah. at the moment being certified organic with an within Australia is a voluntary process. However, any producer or manufacturer can claim a product is organic organic on its packaging with as little as one Mm -hmm. ingredient being organic origins, which is crazy. So you could have a whole list of products, um, you know, within whatever product it is. And just because one particular thing in that is organic, they can actually claim it to be organic, which is, which is crazy. It's, it's See, because it could pop, like, not to say you use the word dangerous, because that might be over dramatizing it, but it's, it's not really, it, it, it's a slippery slope because, you know, say for instance, if there's uh, an individual or a parent or whatever it may be, you go, hey, listen, I want to make the switch to organic for whatever reason that you want to do it on. Um, you may have the best intentions and go, I'm going to go buy that. And you may not see or feel a change. And, and let's just, you know, let's just say it's got one, that one ingredient and you go, well, this isn't any different. What the hell am I doing? And that could be the difference between the continuation of wanting to like, you know, buy organic or even just undertake a a change to better yourself because, you know, sometimes we can get discouraged very quickly. And especially if we know that we're not being supported on the other end of us trying to do the right thing. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, so so what's the difference between organic and non-certified organic? I think the main difference is that they're produced without synthetic, chemicals that's another thing that's a bit confusing sometimes too i think yeah uh, i think there's this yeah there's a lot of big words that i might not be qualified <laughs> to, to say um, but yeah with, with certified <laughs> organic um 
there's a lot of standards that have to be met in order to be able to claim that you are certified organic. And, um, and it can't just be, Hey, listen, we've got these two or three things that we've chucked into our thing and they're, they're organic products. So therefore our product is organic. It's like, no, 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 it doesn't work like that, buddy. So it I has mean, to be. I just wonder, the main thing is, I mean, how can we look out for misla- misleading packaging then on, on organic products? Is it, is, yeah. it, is it the bud that you're talking about? Yeah. So one, so there's, there's six different certifications in Australia and, and the most prominent is the Australian certified organics, the ACO bud logo. So when you, you know, if, if next time you're in the shop, um, you like, and you look at the front, there will have a, a thing that might, might say ACO certified organic, and it'll be this little bud logo. Now there are six different um, certifications, but if you look and it says certified organic, no, no company will be able to claim that they are certified organic without actually meeting those regulations. Now, obviously we're, we're talking in terms of Australian certified organic. So look for that bud logo. And that's, a, that's meaning that's the standard that you can, you can trust. Now, just to sort of give an example, we are, uh, we like a couple of places I went to in one day was, was Kyala farms, um, Cleaver's meats and, and then Fordsdale farm. So all of them are out in the, the Lockyer Valley Toowoomba area in Queensland. And Kyala first was all, flour um so like pancake mix self-raising flour grain all that kind of stuff now he's just got silos like these massive silos and and they were the ones that started up the organics industry i think in queensland um for 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 grain and whatnot so just something simple as saying so how do you do pest control because you know how do you how do you ensure there's no weevils and there's no like all these different kinds of things inside your produce and they have got methods in place so uh, like one chamber sort of might deprive it of oxygen or whatever, because they don't want to use pesticides. So there's all these different ways that they're doing it. And mind you, it's all going to be covered in the videos that we're releasing for Australian Organic Awareness Month. So I don't want to give too much away, but um, there's all these procedures that are put in place to ensure that standard. And when you're talking cleavers meats, they're to, uh, they're, everything's free range. There's no, um, no hormone added, mm-hmm. no nothing. That's the way that they want to do it. And there's such a big difference with the quality of meat. It's totally sh- and 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 yeah there is and you can tell that you can taste the difference you last, really can last night we had some free range chicken and we were just saying that we could you can just taste and feel the difference and until it's somebody has that experience yeah. as you said earlier you can't describe it in the other in the other way but you know totally. i guess these experiences really do emphasize the importance of just consumers in general to always look out for like an official certification logo such as the bud yeah when purchasing yeah. um, any products that claim to sort of to be organic, but, but it's incredible to, to hear what you're saying about all, all of these producers and what they're doing to ensure that they are providing the best quality certified organic produce. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and just to sort of take it to the ground level of uh, let's say Fordsdale farms um, where they were uh, that's, that's all the, all the fresh vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. that yeah. You know, that we went to the farm itself and it was really cool because I said to him, like, how do you, how do you go about organic farming? And he was like, okay, so first of all, there's yeah, no pesticides, none of that. And I said, so how would you look after pest control? He said, so what we've done is we've planted native plants all around the farms and the bugs that that will attract. So they've, they've re- the research that goes into this kind of stuff is next level. So that's why it's talking about meeting the standard. So they've planted particular plants around the farm, not on like not on the farm, but around the surrounding area that will attract certain insects and, and whatnot that feed on the bugs that would eat their crops. So it's using nature to work in unison with themselves. And then on top of that, they have a machine that will go through and like create the laneways. But then after that, he's like, we just roll, have to roll up our sleeves and weed out by hand because we're not using, um, you know, oh, roundup, incredible. we're not using. So he goes, we actually have like just us, there'll be about sort of 10 of us and we spend, might spend a whole day going through this field here. The next day we'll go through that. And by the time we're finished on the, you know, whatever field it may be, we have to start again because the weeds will start growing again. So it's just rolling up the sleeves and going again. He goes, but in saying that, we're not going to use crap on our foods because if I'm eating it, it's, if, if I want my kids to eat it, I want someone else's kids to eat it. I wouldn't want someone else's kids to eat what I'm not, you know, not going to allow my kids to eat kind of thing. And he said, um, that's like their mantra. And to sort of take it back, I said, what motivates you guys? Because you know, we see these companies and these corporations and you go, I'll buy the package, but I, like there's, there's got to be a face behind it. What's, what's your motivation for getting into organic farming? Cause in Australia, it's not easy. Like, again, we don't have the regulating bodies. It would be much easier to go through the conventional practices rather than to head it up because once there's momentum, people can jump on that bandwagon and, and the, the road has been paved. That's easy. 
but uh, Quentin from Kyala, which is the the flower and the and, and like the pancake mix, which I the first love one, yep. so much. Oh, my <laughs> nephews love the pancake mix. Anyway, so um, Quentin and uh, and Paul from Fordsdale. So both of them had a very similar story, and and um, and it was really cool because these fellas are generational family farmers, and so to put it to a very very like lovely, respectful but very blokey people, and and I loved having chats with them because I said what you know, what's, what's your personal story behind wanting to start this and, and be the, like the, 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 um, the OG people starting it. And, and Quentin said, first, we said, my wife and I could, we were having trouble conceiving a child and we just were looking into all these different things. And then we just basically wanted to shift our life. And he said, we just completely started eating organic and living organic. And he goes, and he go and he said to me, he goes, Link, while there is no science behind this, I will state that while there is no science or proof behind this, I have a daughter and, and he goes, she's in her twenties now. And Paul said something very similar. He said, we were having trouble conceiving um, our third child. And we said, what are we going to do? And they said, you know what? Like we're eating a lot of this and that, and let's just go 100% organic. And he said, not only did we, we were lucky enough to conceive, but at the, the behavior of our children completely changed. He said, we stopped, you know, sort of you saying, all right, let's just cut these out for a while. Yes, the, yeah. The children on the spectrum. Um, I've seen a lot of documentaries about the changes completely in their behavior, in their mental clarity uh, yeah. overall. So, I mean, so the, the benefits of changing to an organic um, lifestyle being from the food yeah. uh, I mean, it is incredible the changes that it can make to your life. It is. You feel. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, I do apologize. Like I didn't want to sound too preachy. I was really trying to work, like, you know, make sure I worded mm-hmm. that correctly because yeah, I didn't want to sound too preachy about it. Um, but, and, and again, these guys said, that's our story. That's how we feel about it. And that's why we do what we do. And so like the reason I was telling those stories is just for, um, to sort of reiterate why these guys do what they do. They're the, they're the, the, the heads of these companies and they so they're the fellas that are kind of making sure it goes the direction it does and if they're the ones saying that's what worked for us and we want to make sure that we can give any of our consumers that same opportunity that's why we do what we do and and quentin actually was, was tearing up when he was telling me this story so it meant the world to him and um and and just to sort of add this little i know i'm talking year off and i'm so sorry about this um but this little extra bit that a lot of these organics uh certified organics companies are doing now is they're putting QR codes on each and every one of their packages, right? So um, you can scan this QR code. And this is, this is extra, I guess, reassurance for the consumer because so many times I've, I've had this chat, mind you, saying like, we're eating this, but I don't know where it's come from. I don't know what condition it's been in. And so what these guys are doing now is they're putting a QR code on their packaging that you can scan and that can show you the farm that it was produced on. And it will show you the farmer that was harvesting at the time and the conditions that it was That's in. That's awesome. As that extra reassurance, like they don't, don't even need to do that, but they are because they're going, well, if you want to know, that's where it was. This is the date, you know, this or whatever it was that it was packaged. This is where it was. This is the farmer that was looking after it at the time. And because, I just as we think, said earlier, is the fact that awesome. so much more goes into ensuring that it is certified organic um, because we have moved away from initially living the way that we, we did off the land, naturally ensuring that we didn't have any pesticides. Well, we didn't, ha- you know, in, in Italian villages where my family's from, of course, everything wasn't naturally organic because you had, that was just, that was just how they lived. It's just the fact that our lifestyle sort of moved towards ensuring that we, you know, were things were mass produced and um, as a result of ensuring that that was the, the quality of that, that there was pesticides. So we have having to move back to the way that things were, um, but a lot yeah. goes into it these days. So it's great to be able to see the stories, the faces, the names behind um, each, you know, each one of their businesses too. But I, I guess just uh, in, in wrapping this up, you know, I mean, for anyone that's wanting to, I guess, overhaul their life, um, you know, what, what, what advice would you have for anyone that's potentially sort of resisting change? Yeah. Um, well, I think first, you know, you need to, to, it all comes down to you as an individual. So like, yeah, for resisting change, that's, that's a, that's a cool, that's a cool one because yeah, for the longest time, you know, I, I did that and um, because you kind of can brush it off and stuff like that. And I think the thing to keep in mind, okay. Um, a couple of little things just always to keep in mind is 
I can't, I've said it before, but I can't stress enough the importance of having a support group around you. That's, that's most important. Just uh, first and foremost with anything in life, just always have a, a good group of people around you. Um, but when it comes to you as, as you know, an individual, um, what do they say? Um, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Um, and, and remember that it's just that first step. You don't need to look at the top of the mountain to go, crap, that's where I need to be. Um, just look at the first step. If you one day just decide, Hey, I'm, I'm going to go buy some broccoli to add on my dinner tonight. That's great. Good on you. Um, if you all of a sudden go, I had one less chocolate bar today because I want to just kind of cut back good on you. Like we, you need to remember that you don't need to go cold Turkey overnight. And if you want to make a change, fantastic. Like every single day, try and just try and do something better that your that your future self will thank you for. And um, acknowledge and everything the, that we the challenges we're going through at the moment too, as you mentioned, absolutely. it is a difficult time already. Yeah, it is. It is. So you know, we got to like think of everything that we do now is going to have a future impact on us later. And so you know, with all like just for all the organic stuff, they're doing stuff that's not only going to be good for all the consumers, but ultimately for the sustainability of the land in general. Um, and so everything that we do, just, you know, do something that your future self is going to thank you for, but make your day by making someone else's day. That's a really cool, uh, that's one of my favorite quotes. And, and have you ever noticed if you will pass someone, you never met them before, you never will see them again, but you just make eye contact, you smile, nod, something inside you makes you want to smile. Or if you're at a shop and someone wishes you a good day, thank you, you too. It's just it's something there's all these little things that I love to just kind of think about in my days or whatever, which is just do something that'll make you smile. Try and do even one little good thing for yourself each and every day. And that can lead on because routine is the hardest thing to get out of that can be so easy to fall into. So if you're going to set yourself a routine, make it a good one because getting out of a, a bad routine is such a hard mugger of a thing to do. So if you're going to set these little things over a couple of days, it starts to become routine over a week. It develops into a bit more. And over time, it actually just becomes a part of you, but that is starts with a single step. So that's all I can say is have the beautiful support base around you that are always going to be there for you that you can have a laugh with, but also if you need to, Oh, I'm leaning, I'm leaning. It's like, I got you. All right, great. Thank you. Um, you can talk to all that kind of stuff do something good for yourself and make your day by making someone else's day. I think they're my little, little things. You're the best. Look, no, no doubt what you've shared will inspire so many lives towards making, you know, positive changes uh, in their lives towards a healthier lifestyle um, for their mind, body and soul. And we're just so grateful for your time today, Lincoln. It's just been an no, absolute pleasure. <laughs> they, no, thank you for, for doing like, thank you for having me on and, and just for helping to put out such a beautiful message. I really appreciate the time and, and for everyone tuning in, thank you very much for your time and for listening. Hopefully I haven't chewed your ear off too much, but yeah, all the best everyone and be there for each other and, and be good to yourself, be good to those around you and just sending you guys all lots of love. Thanks so much, Link. You take care, stay safe. All right. All the best. You too. Yeah. All right. Big love. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs>